St. Stephen's accepts everyone who wishes to follow Christ, worship together, grow in faith, and share God's love through service to others. As Don and Vic have mentioned, we are tying the mission statement of St. Stephen to the readings for the next few weeks. And the piece that I will be considering in light of our readings today is the Growing in Faith section. Now some of you may recall the meaning of faith that is stated in the book of Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. That bit about the faith of our ancestors refers to things like Abraham being willing to leave the Ur of the Chaldeans and travel to an unknown land. Of Abraham's becoming the father of nations of people despite his and Sarah's advanced age. Of Moses speaking to Pharaoh and leading the Israelites out of Egypt to the Promised Land. Of Gideon, a coward leading armies to victory. Of Amos, a farmer and dresser of sycamore trees, prophesying the coming overthrow of the kingdom of Israel. The Bible talks about these people and others who despite hardship and suffering, had faith. Faith that what they said and did was what God desired, was according to God's will. Many of the things that we Christians believe in, that we have faith in, are part of our creed, the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed. And the verses of these creeds capture the essence of our faith what it means to be Christian, or what we believe in. But on a personal level, on an individual level, what do each of us have faith in when it comes to God? When it comes to following Jesus and his example, on a daily basis, how faithful are we? If you're like me, there are some days when my faith is rock solid. And on those firm foundation days, I can look at the events in my life and see blessings and opportunities, and I can rely on many of the short quotes from scripture and tradition that express my faith as, I know that my Redeemer lives. God is my rock and my stronghold. Great is the Lord, and his mercy endures forever. And then there are days when my faith is a tad shaky. Things happen that make me question God and question myself, my faith. In those moments, I feel lost, alone, adrift, unsure of what the heck is happening and wondering why. Why are things so confusing, so meaningless, so hurtful? Thomas Merton, a theologian and former Trappist monk at the Abbey of Gethsemane in Kentucky, wrote a prayer for times of uncertainty that goes like this. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me, and I cannot know for certain where it will end nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. And I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Merton's faith is revealed in that he realizes that he doesn't always know if what he is doing is the right thing but he believes that 
his desire to do the right thing and his faith in God will get him through whatever his troubles are. Now, strangely enough, it is in these times of doubt and disappointment and even despair that provide the way to an eventual stronger faith. Anyone who has struggled to learn something new will recognize the effectiveness of strength training and practice. Anyone here tried to learn something and got it absolutely 100% flawlessly right the first time? I imagine that would be a pretty rare thing. Most of us try, and we try again, and we just keep on trying until we are more or less successful at this new thing that we're trying to learn. We learn what works and what doesn't work. Our faith is similar in that regard, and I want to share with you a personal anecdote of a time back in 2003 when I really thought I was doing the will of God. I was doing the right thing, and it turned out maybe God had a different answer. We had back in those days, and this was in Virginia at a different church, um, a group that was called Christmas in April, kind of like Habitat for Humanity, where they would collect throughout the year projects that needed to be done by people who didn't have either the means financially or the skills to be able to accomplish these things, often some sort of repair to a home. And the project that our church had signed up for was to build a wheelchair ramp that would lead up to a porch and we were going to strip off the old paint on the porch and make it so that the ramp and the porch matched and we paint those. And we were going to do this on a Saturday and it rained. So we said, okay, after church on Sunday we'll do it. So I went to church and after church I went home to change out of church clothes and put on my grubby so that I could go out and do some of this work. I came out to my car and it had a flat tire. I said, oh no, Satan, uh -uh. you're not going to prevent me from helping these people out. I'm going. So I went inside and I called AAA and they said, be there in 45 minutes. I said, great. So I waited, got close to that 45 minutes, went back outside so I could flag the guy down. 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and 15. I go back inside, I call him and this guy said, you'd be here in 45. What's the deal? Oh, it'll be another 45 minutes, but they'll be there. I said, well, you know, this race, they're going to be done with the project, and I won't have been able to contribute. So I said to Robin, I said, Robin, you stay, and when the guy comes, you help him with which car needs the tire change, let me take your car. She said, okay, all right. So I took her car, and off I went. I got to the project site, people already busy at work, and they gave me my assignment to help with the scraping of the paint, and I grabbed my scraper and went at it. I don't think I was there 10, maybe 15 minutes. And the call came first to the priest that was there with us and also to the project leader, saying, Allison, you need to go home immediately. I said, what's the matter? Robin didn't say, she just said, you had to come home immediately. I said, okay. I jumped in her car and I ran on back. It took about 20 minutes. I got back home. She was hysterical. She was crying and she revealed that she had received a phone call that a very good friend of hers another place where she used to live in Utah, had taken a gun, shot two people, and turned the gun on himself and killed himself. In the intervening days and weeks and months and years later, we discerned that the car that had the flat tires, triple A people that were delayed, were maybe God's way of saying, no, you need to stay here. You need to be here to comfort breathing person. I thought I was doing the right thing. I was going off to help other people. You see, there's ways that we turn to our faith and think we're doing the right thing and find, well, maybe we need to go a different direction. We try, we try again. Same kind of exercise for all of us. <laughs> but we need to have faith that we will grow in faith. And our readings today address having faith in times of trouble, opportunities to grow in our faith. The reading from Isaiah describes the way of the Messiah. It is the account of the suffering servant. 
a description that tells of a tragedy and yet ends in hope and joy. The chosen one would be and was stricken, afflicted, wounded, crushed, bruised, oppressed, subjected to a perversion of justice and cut off from the living. And then after this torment, the Messiah in his obedience and faith had his days prolonged, ensured the will of God prospered, saw light, found satisfaction, gained knowledge, made many righteous, and made intercession for others. Jesus, the Messiah, went through numerous sufferings, both physical and psychological, beatings, humiliation, betrayal. Because he had faith that God's plan for humanity was worth these torments, he went through them. And yet, on the night before he was to be filled, Jesus asked that this cup of death be allowed to pass him by. And then he added, it is not my will, but yours, he died. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. As he hung on the cross, Jesus is recorded as saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus had his own moment of anxiety and fear when he faced, in his last minute, that same question that we, in our times of trouble, all too often have. Why? And the song for today contains part of the answer for that why. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And we may not know the reason for why things happen to us. Psalm doesn't lay out an explanation for life's challenges and suffering. Instead, it is an answer of mercy. God says, because you are bound to me in love, because you know my name, because you call upon me, for that I will be with you in your times of trouble. doesn't say that I'm going to remove your times of trouble. It says, I will be with you in times of trouble. And the psalm assures us that we will be rescued and honored, granted long life, and shown salvation doesn't say when or how this will happen. It may be in this life, and it may be in the next life. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. When we get to today's gospel, we have the story of James and John jockeying for the best places in heaven next to Jesus. So far, the disciples have had a pretty cool time hanging out with Jesus and learning from him. They have seen miracles and even done some of the same things themselves. Healing, casting out demons, preaching, teaching, and feeding thousands with a few fish and loaves of bread. Those wonderful days are about to end, and Jesus asks, are they ready for the tough times ahead? They glibly say, well, of course we're ready. The disciples have not yet experienced the persecution that will shape them and hunt them for the days that follow Jesus' resurrection, the days that will test their faith. Jesus then tells the whole group of disciples, he says, look, the point of being my disciple is not to be the best, the greatest, not about being the most important, not about being the one in charge. The point of being my disciple is to be a helper for others. And there will be days when you do great things, <coughs> and there will be days when it seems like nothing goes right. And through all of that, the good and the bad, keep your focus on doing as much good as you can. Doing the work that I have shown you. Love one another. It'll all work out eventually. Jesus tells them, have faith in me, and if that's too difficult, at least have faith in the one who <coughs> Our collet today says, Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with 
steadfast faith in the confession of your name. When we, the church, step out in faith to help others as Jesus asks us to do, we are channels for God's love and mercy and grace. And those works of mercy are often the catalyst, the inspiration for others to grow in their faith. When our prayers, when prayers are answered through our acts of charity, forgiveness, welcome and caring, when we provide food, blankets, and funds for relief agencies, when we apologize and seek reconciliation with others, when we warmly invite others to come in and be a part of us, when we pray for, visit, and reach out to anyone in any kind of trouble, when we do these things, our faith can grow and be strengthened. And we may never know how our works of mercy will influence others. We may never know how our faith helps someone else to grow in their faith. Faith is the assurance of things hopeful, the conviction of things not seen. Amen.